Welcome to my review of the slasher film Terrifier. The killer clown is a familiar figure in the horror genre, which the movie Terrifier takes to nightmarish extremes. Written and directed by Damien Leone, the film is a feature-length follow-up to his short film of the same name, as well as his anthology horror film All Hallows' Eve which marked the debut of the gleefully homicidal mime, Art the Clown, and made him a legend in indie horror circles. I can understand why horror fans are clamoring to see more of Art the Clown, who will be returning to the big screen in the upcoming sequel, Terrifier 2. So let's get started with this review. On Halloween night, two friends, Tara and Don, leave a party. They encounter a creepy guy in a clown costume, named Art the Clown, who begins to stalk them. The situation escalates inside a derelict apartment building, where the bodies start piling up as the killer clown goes on a bloody rampage that puts on full display his depraved, gruesome methods of killing. I loved how the film has a grainy texture and atmosphere that harkens back to 80s slasher films. David Howard Thornton plays Art the Clown, who was previously played by Mike Gianelli in All Hallows' Eve. Thornton brilliantly creates his entire performance through mime, expression, and gesture. His hideous clown makeup, like his theatrical gestures, becomes a mask upon which he reflects and mocks the character's fear and dread. Art the Clown breaks the rules of the typical killer. Unlike other slashers, Art the Clown doesn't hide from plain sight. He walks casually in public, and it's amusing to see the characters respond with indifference at first to the danger he presents. Don's character in particular is too desensitized and glued to her phone to see the red flags. Art the Clown, even when he is mundanely sitting at a table, brings a sense of mounting dread to all of his scenes. That's the brilliance of Art the Clown. He mimics something familiar and ordinary, like taking a selfie, and makes it terrifying, yet also darkly humorous. The movie made me think about why clowns are so frightening and scary. Clowns, like children, engage the world irrationally through play and fun. The opposite of play is, of course, work. The rational world of rules and laws and, by extension, the moral order holding them up. We can see how easily clowns, through this idea of play, become associated with the demonic, through their playful subversion of the world of law and order. In this way, clowns are forces of chaos, overturning all sense of reason and order. Art the Clown takes this chaotic, anarchistic quality of clowns to pretty morbid, sadistic extremes. This film is incredibly gruesome and plays like some dirty snuff film found in the recesses of the dark web. It's full-on torture porn, and some scenes are excruciating to watch. I wasn't too invested in the characters, who are one-dimensional and mostly disposable. The flatly drawn characters of Tara and Don are your typical horror victims. The shocking brutality of the kills becomes pretty exploitative at times. The violence towards the female characters is incredibly disturbing. Female victimization is nothing new in the horror genre. But the movie crosses the line in one scene particularly, where a woman's nude body is objectified and on display throughout the murder sequence. Similar to the Joker, Art the Clown turns death into an entertaining spectacle, a theatrical performance. I'm not sure whether the film is self-aware in regard to how it exploits violence and particularly female trauma. On some level, I do think Art the Clown, through turning death into a spectacle, is poking fun at our voyeuristic consumption of violence. Its excessive brutality made me question the very ethics of viewership. That's the sign of a good horror movie. 
which should shock and not desensitize you to the violence, and Terrifier does just that and goes a step further. Particularly since the movie leans a little too heavily into torture porn for my tastes. I enjoyed its grimy, claustrophobic atmosphere, the action mostly concentrated in one location. The upcoming sequel seems to be setting up for a crazier, even more gruesome chapter. The sequel has a 138 minute runtime, which is almost unprecedented for a slasher film of this kind. I have total respect for director Damien Leon, who embraces his low-budget grindhouse style of filmmaking to create one of the most vicious slasher films in recent memory. I personally wouldn't eat any snacks while watching it since you might find yourself getting a bit queasy during certain scenes. If you have a strong stomach and enjoy a good slasher, then I would definitely check this one out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you haven't already and I will look forward to seeing you all in the next video.